Now, just around two weeks or so ago, we took a look at the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D and pitted it against the newest offering from Intel in the form of the Core i9-14900K. While it is new and offers up slightly more performance compared to the previous generation, we went in not really expecting miracles. And the general consensus was that AMD, based on at least gaming performance and price point, was the better choice. Though that didn't stop the AMD fanboys coming out and arguing against a point that wasn't really made. Now beyond that though, one of the biggest points made was that we use 7600 megahertz memory with both processors. And you guys wanted to see what kind of uplift if any, would be had with the 7800X 3D utilizing DDR5 6000 megahertz CL30 memory instead. So that's exactly what we're gonna look at. But before we do, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. Hello mate, you all right? Yeah, just got all the bits from my banging new gaming PC. Just gotta put it together. It's gonna be so much better than yours. Oh, right. What did you get then? The latest Intel 12th gen processor, a feature patched motherboard and 32 gig of DDR4 memory. See, miles ahead of yours. <laughs> you you realise that board needs DDR5 memory, don't you? Don't tell me you went and bought the wrong stuff. DDR4 is so 2014. I can't believe you was that stupid. <gasps> what? No, you're joking. What should I get then? For me, I'd be looking at Corsair's newest Vengeance DDR5 kits, or if you're wanting that all important RGB, then go for the Dominator Platinum RGB. Oh, you are a lifesaver, thanks. But where can I find out more? By clicking the link in the description below, of course. <laughs> and you call me the stupid one. So I do wanna get straight into the benchmarks as quickly as possible, but before I do, I wanna explain some things just very, very quickly. When we tested the 7800X 3D, along with all other AMD and Intel CPUs, we took quite a bit of time binning each CPU, which essentially means running them with a set speed memory and seeing how far they could be pushed. Now, in the case of some CPUs from AMD, also actually from Intel side, some just wouldn't boot with 7600 megahertz memory. Some would only boot with 7400 megahertz, and some were actually lower than that. Then if they did boot, we found some to be stable and others not to be. And that's why you'll see the likes of the 7950X 3D that we tested with its dual CCD design, essentially running out of room for an improved memory controller and falling pretty flat on its face in terms of supporting memory speeds. Now talking about supporting memory speeds, some of the comments on the video where we put AMD against Intel, and rightly so, said that AMD was the better choice and that we saw some pretty obscure comments about how we ignored the Adjessa update. Though that's clearly not the case if we used faster than 6,000 megahertz memory, and even to the point of actually being called liars, because there's no way we could be running beyond 6,000 megahertz memory, which as mentioned is down to the Adjessa update that I guess quite a few users maybe didn't get the memo on. Now, either way, speaking of the Adjessa update, it does allow for higher speed memory to be run with AMD's 7000 series lineup, which is something users called for in a very, very big way. And now that it's here, well, it seemed the vocal minority would like to completely ignore it and use 6000 megahertz CL30 memory instead, in a bit of a kind of 180 moment. So that brings us to today, kind of trying to, I guess, appeal to both sides of that argument, where we've tested the 7800X 3D again using 6000 megahertz CL30 memory, and we'll be showing it against the 7600 megahertz CL36 kit and seeing how things now fare against the i9-14900K, a chip that seemed to do much better in terms of the 1% lows. So for our testing, as always, we tried to keep the parts in all of our systems as similar as we could, where possible. For our Intel system, we used the ASUS ROG Maximus Z790 Extreme motherboard, while our AM5 system used the Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master. Both systems used 32GB of Team Group T-Force Delta RGB 7600MHz CL36 memory, along with also testing the 7800X 3D with 32GB of G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo 6000MHz CL30 memory. To alleviate any bottlenecks, we use the Inno3D RTX 4090 iChill X3OC with the GeForce 537.42 driver. And all of our testing was done on the latest version of Windows 11, and all motherboards had their respective latest BIOS versions installed. Also, for the sake of transparency, we did have to do a few retests, as when we tested the 7800X 3D with the 6000MHz kit, we found the results to be just a little bit out on the 7600MHz kit, 
Upon retesting, the outcome fell a lot more in line with what we actually expected. So for any eagle-eyed viewers who may notice some of the performances a little different here and there from our last video, that's the reason as to why. And sometimes it's only when we test something else that we get to see a result that stands out as being wrong and being an outlier. Also, as a side note, if you want to see all of the charts for all 42 games that we tested, as we'll be showing about 16 or so here today, then you can over on our Patreon, where you also get a ton of other cool exclusive perks like behind the scenes content, bi-weekly game nights, and much, much more. It also helps us out like you wouldn't believe to keep creating huge content like this. The link for that is as always down below. So with that out of the way, let's get into those glorious benchmarks. So kicking things off with a Plague Tale Requiem, where at 1080p on the Ultra preset, we do see a small uplift in performance by using the 6000 MHz kit of around 3%, while also seeing a healthier 8% improvement in the 1% lows, an area where AMD showed some weaknesses before. This now also puts the 7800X3D 5% ahead of Intel's Core i9 processor and showing that the cheaper CPU is stronger in terms of gaming in this title. At the higher 1440p and 4K resolutions, we still find AMD coming out ahead by a very small margin, while the memory didn't really make much of a difference, if any, as the CPU is somewhat less relied upon as the GPU starts to take over. In Baldur's Gate 3, again, the slower memory with tighter timings does see a small uplift, but only of around 3%, though this is still enough to widen the gap over Intel, as now the AMD Ryzen CPU comes in 24% faster at 1080p with the Core i9 seemingly running out of juice as the numbers at both 1080p and 1440p are very similar, again with things lining back up at 4K as the GPU does the work, and both CPUs kind of take a little bit of a back seat. In Call of Duty, there really isn't much to say as all scenarios at 1080p come in nigh on identically, with just a margin of error difference at all three resolutions. The only point worth talking about again comes by way of the 1% lows, where Intel arguably do come in better at 1080p, but only around 3% or so, and nothing at such a high frame rate that you'd even notice. In Cyberpunk on the Ultra preset, we're still very much limited at 1080p and 1440p, and this was actually one of the retests we did, as before, Intel were looking to be the favourite, so I'm glad this has levelled itself out slightly. Though again, Intel still managed to keep fighting back just a little in the 1% lows, with 7% faster performance, though again, nothing that you'd ever notice. Enabling ray tracing, Intel managed to still hold a lead even with the 6000 MHz kit, giving us an extra single frame of performance, while also increasing performance in the 1% lows too. Sadly, that's not strong enough to win this battle, where Intel do manage to command a 5% lead over AMD, while the higher resolutions see nothing really in it, though AMD do manage to increase performance by 3% of 1440p, which now matches that of the 14900K. Moving over to F123 and it's widely known that the game favours AMD, and that was clear before where the 7800X3D was coming in 8% ahead of Intel, while now that lead increases to 13%, at a staggering 492 FPS, which is a nice 4% improvement with the slower speed but tighter timing memory. As we move up in resolution, the improvements are still there, but the main noticeable point is the 1% lows, which managed to increase by 10% over the faster speed memory, and now beat Intel not just in the averages, but in the lows as well. And that's the same story for 4K as well. Enabling ray tracing and the biggest drawback of the 7800X3D was in the 1% lows again, where Intel led by around 9%. Though with the 6000 MHz memory, AMD now pushed forward by 2 FPS over Intel in the averages and fall a margin of error result behind in the 1% lows. So some definite improvements that essentially have them neck and neck. In Far Cry 6, this was another title that deserved a retest, as before we were getting performance of 208 FPS on the Ryzen based CPU, which gave Intel quite a hefty margin over them, while the retest came in at 249 FPS, which now puts it 3% ahead of Intel. Though running the 7800X3D with the slower memory actually saw performance decline by 2% in the averages, with 1440p seeing both AMD scenarios beating Intel by 5%, and at 4K the same but a wider 10% margin in favour to AMD. When we enable ray tracing, we see at 1080p that Intel, while it does come in behind AMD, who saw no uplift in the averages, it still manages to come in between 5 and 8% faster in the 1% lows. This is then repeated at 1440p and even at 4K, where AMD come out ahead and beat Intel, though the faster memory doesn't do anything for the averages, though it does see increases in the 1% lows, which is an area that Intel were constantly winning on before. In Hogwarts Legacy, we do see an improvement with the CL30 kit, which manages to increase performance by 3%, though it's still not enough to compete against Intel, which comes in at 183 FPS, putting it 6% ahead of AMD's best showing, and with strong 1% lows too. 
Though as we move up to 1440p, AMD do fight back with both speeds and memory, and the same with 4K, where Intel come in just behind. Enabling ray tracing saw a small improvement using the slower but tighter 6000 MHz memory of 3%, which was enough to come out faster than Intel, where it was previously matched in performance. Though what's more interesting is how the 7800X3D gained performance in the averages, but lost around 8% in the 1% lows. And this was consistent at 1440p too, while 4K saw similar performance across the board on both AMD and Intel. Moving over to Spider-Man and the AMD chip actually manages to lose performance when going from the faster memory to the slower yet tighter memory, though only by a margin of less than 1%, though it's hit especially hard in the 1% lows where performance takes a dive of around 8%, which helps to keep Intel looking good at this CPU bound resolution. Now we're still CPU bound at 1440p with both CPUs sitting around the same, while at 4K the Intel chip starts to struggle and AMD comes out on top with the 6000 MHz setup, being the fastest at 179 FPS. When looking at ray tracing at 1080p, the AMD 7800X3D was around 3% faster than Intel's Core i9, while now with the 6000 MHz that gap is extended to around 5%, and now comes in with stronger 1% lows to match. And then it's a similar story as we move up in resolution to 1440p, where AMD were already ahead, but now widen the gap, and exactly the same at 4K. AMD win in both the averages and 1% lows, and in some cases by up to 15%. In Ratchet and Clank, we start to see some pretty awful figures across the board when factoring in the 1% lows, though the averages are strong pretty much across the board, with AMD coming out the fastest with the 6000 MHz kit, giving an extra 2% over the 7600 MHz kit but also sees a huge 15% drop in the 1% lows. At 1440p and 4K, where the CPU is less of a burden, we find similar performance in both the averages and the 1% lows for all systems tested, though those 1% lows across the board are just pretty terrible in comparison to the averages. When switching over to ray trace performance, Intel were leading over AMD before, whereas the 6000 MHz kit manages to bring the performance up by 4%, now putting it level pegging with Intel at 143 FPS, and identically in the lows too at 83 FPS. 1440p sees a little more disparity, with AMD pushing ahead of Intel, now by 6%, whereas 4K sees that gap shrink to just 3%, but a win is still a win. Lastly, moving over to Starfield and before, Intel were leading the way with an 18% margin over AMD's 7800X3D in the averages and holding the same 18% lead in the 1% lows at 1080p. And there's no change with the slower but tighter memory, as it comes in identically to its previous result in both the averages and the 1% lows, at least at 1080p. Because at 1440p we do see some small gains of 5%, which then puts it a small 2% ahead of Intel. Though at 4K the results are, I guess, more in line, with margin of error differences between AMD and Intel, though the CL30 memory does find a few extra frames and now beats Intel by a single FPS. So there's some pretty strong improvements across the board for AMD, and even with the ones that weren't as strong, it was still enough to just edge ahead of Intel in areas where Team Blue were only just coming out faster by a small, small margin. Now though, we've looked at 16 games, we actually tested in 42 games in total. So let's take a look at the percentage differences to see exactly how things round up. It's here where at 1080p, AMD come out 3% faster overall across all 42 titles. And while AMD do manage to come in with some impressive numbers, especially in the likes of Baldur's Gate 3, Intel do the same for Starfield with a 15% difference. So each have their favorites, but for the most part, there are 29 games that see a less than 5% difference either way. Now one area where Intel seemed to have won quite dramatically last time out was in the 1% lows, where AMD came in 5% slower overall, whereas now that has dramatically changed, with both CPUs coming in level with no percentage difference overall. Again, we do get some instances such as Red Dead Redemption 2, where AMD command a very strong 20% lead over Intel, though the tables turn in The Last of Us Part 1, where Intel come in at 160 FPS to AMD's 122 meaning that AMD, even with the 6000 MHz CL30 memory in place, sits 24% lower than Intel. Again, we see 24 of the 42 games coming in with less than a 5% difference either way. Then as we move up to 1440p, where the CPU is less required and the process is handed over kind of more to the GPU, we find the Ryzen 7 7800X3D sitting 3% faster overall, again with most of the differences falling within just a few percent of each other. Though again, the likes of Baldur's Gate 3 show the biggest variance as AMD come in 15% faster. 
Again, as we look at the 1% lows, things are much closer now, with AMD only coming in a margin of error 1% faster than Intel, though this is quite drastically different from where it came in 4% slower using faster memory. Again, there are strong contenders for both sides, including Red Dead Redemption 2 and The Last of Us Part 1, but with such similar percentage differences, this evens out essentially anyway. Then as we move up to 4K, where most of the work is handed off to the GPU, we again find the 7800X3D coming in 3% faster than the flagship Intel CPU. Though again, aside from some titles that sit dramatically different, mainly in the terms of Spider-Man with and without ray tracing, that comes in 15% faster, the majority of the results are within single digit levels of performance, mainly falling under 5% either way. Lastly, as we look at the 1% lows at 4K, it's a very similar story to the averages, with Spider-Man with ray tracing showing the biggest difference in favour of AMD, though Intel still has its wins here and there, but margin of error differences appear in quite a few games, and retesting could see the results swap places just a little bit. So when we originally posted our findings of the 7800X3D versus the i9-14900K, we were pretty clear, though some people I think didn't actually get the message. AMD was the one to go for. It performed close enough to Intel, though for a much cheaper price, though as mentioned, Intel do have the upper hand when it comes to productivity and gaming in kind of one package. So even though it costs more money, it's the better choice there. Now, I think it was clear to see that the 6000 megahertz CL30 memory is the, say, sweet spot. And it does allow AMD to have its fair share of wins, though Intel still managed to fight back in quite a few titles. But while the 14900K is an amazing CPU for gaming, it's not a gaming CPU. Now what I mean by that is the 7800X3D was made from the ground up, to a degree, to be a gaming CPU. It firmly set its sights on being the gaming king. While Intel don't have a CPU that is engineered or focused solely on that. Instead they have, I guess, how could you put it, all rounders. But I am now eager to see how the i7-14700K compares in 42 games, especially as the 7800X3D comes in at $400 and the i7 is only another $18 on top of that. So you could argue that they're aimed at the same segment in the market, at least in the sense of pricing. And battles like that are always just, I don't know, more interesting because it's not down to just who wins, but by how much of a margin. And in theory, that should be, I guess, extremely close. So let me know if you want to see that in an upcoming video. We do also have a section on our Discord where we take video suggestions, so if you have any other ideas for content, definitely head over to there. The link is down below. Especially as, well, with nothing new out there at the moment, we're starting to ramp up production of these head-to-head -head big game tests, so we're always eager to hear what you guys want to see. Right now, one thing is clear to see with what the tests that we actually did here today. No matter whether you buy AMD or Intel, you're not going to be disappointed with the performance. And depending on your needs, I think there's a strong argument for both of them. But what we can see here is that AMD increasing the supported memory speed, at least for now, was kind of pointless, at least in most games tested. Though I think it's, a, I don't know, a bit more about the long game, as we see the combination of both faster memory speeds and tighter latencies coming together. So maybe updating the adjuster code was a start of something that's yet to come. For now, yeah, that's going to do it for this one. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I know a lot of you wanted to see the 7800X3D with 6000 megahertz CL30 memory, so I'd like to think, yeah, I'd like to think I've done it justice. If you did enjoy this video, then a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. Also, if you love what we do and appreciate the huge amounts of hard work that we put into this video, then you can join the special Patreon club, where you get access to a whole host of goodies, including exclusive behind the scenes content, access to all of the charts for all 42 games, plus much, much more. The link is, as always, down below. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.